I'd like to welcome you to another session of Presenting Our Presence. And today we're very fortunate to have two guests with us. As listeners to Presenting Our Presence, you'll learn a little bit about why these guests are so special. But I'm going to invite our guests to start to introduce themselves after I acknowledge my co-hosts. So Kyle Napier and Dr. Janice Cindy Gadette, and I'm Florence Glanfield. And we're looking forward to the conversation today. So Jeanette, uh, we welcome you to presenting our presence and we invite you to introduce yourself in whatever way is most comfortable for yourself. Thank you. Thank you, Florence. Um, my name is Jeanette Sinclair. I'm um, originally from Lesser Slave Lake area. I'm Sagal Cree, so Northern Cree, also known as Bush Cree. Um, I live here in Edmonton. I have attended the U of A for all of my degrees. <laughs> and um, I'm just really happy to be here. Thank you, Jeanette. And Megan, welcome to presenting our presence. And we invite you to introduce yourself in whatever way is most comfortable for you. Kakio noag maganak, Megan Nitsiga san, Egua Ganigan Akopeo Nitsiga san, Amiskochi Weskahigan Egua Kadotsagigan, Egua Maskotek Utsinia. My name's Megan. I use they, them pronouns, and I'm also Bush Cree, like Jeanette. Um, I'm a member of the Woodland Cree First Nation in Treaty 8 territory, and I grew up mostly in and around Edmonton. Uh, I'm a PhD student in the Faculty of Native Studies, and I'm so grateful to be here today. Thank you. Wow, thank you so much. So colleagues, one of the reasons that this session is so special today is that we are we invited Indigenous artists to submit possible music to go along with presenting our presence. And this is going to be a shift in our structure and the music that we've heard for the last two plus years. And these two amazing humans that are with us today, Jeanette and Megan, are the composers of the music that you will get to hear. So we were going to start this session today by first of all, playing the two pieces that you will begin to hear. And Kyle, if I could invite you to re play those now so that we can hear the outstanding contributions of these two artists. Thank you. You'll rise like a phoenix from the ashes of pain. Make time for the elders, teachings once again. Hear the stories of our people silenced for too long. Our families are healing, our nations will be strong. We will rise once again. Thank you. 
Wounded, overlooked, our stories we will write. We'll publish our own books. We'll pick up the pen, mightier than the sword. Guided by truth, we'll be on the wall. Wow. <laughs> I've got just little goosebumps back down my back. Thank you so much. <laughs> and now we'll have the opportunity to listen to Megan's.
Wow. Another one. Goosebumps going down the back of my spine. Wow. I'm just so taken by the beautiful words. So I'm going to invite, um, first of all, maybe we'll invite each of Jeanette and Megan to just respond to hearing the music. And then we'll go into the questions. So Jeanette, I invite you to go first. Thank you. So I'd like to first comment um, and tell Megan what a beautiful song that is and what a beautiful voice you have. So that is just amazing, very touching. And um, if I can just also comment about your introduction in Cree, I love it. <laughs> that was great. I've been practicing a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so sorry, Florence, you wanted us to comment on just hearing this each other's songs or? Yeah, Jeanette, it, this really is truly visiting. So whatever came to mind, I saw you clapping as you heard uh, <laughs> Megan's song. And I saw Megan, you know, raising when she heard your, when they heard your song. And uh, so just some opening comments about hearing the music and Perhaps you've already thought you've, you've said enough. It's really up to you. I would like to comment. I think that the, um, I think the blend of the songs will be really nice together. And it, it's not something, it's something I'm getting used to listening to myself. It's very hard at first to listen to myself. I've always just like plug my ears. I don't want to hear it. Right. So that's that insecurity of never being good enough or feeling good enough. So, so to sit through and just listen, um, I take the songs as a gift and as a message and to honor when the song comes through you, that that's, that's just what it is. It's a gift to share. And so I have to let go of judging myself and just listen. And so easy to listen to others, hard to listen to yourself. And I'm speaking for myself, but I'm getting used to it. So um, I, I'm just really honored to be included in something that um, that is so nice. Like your work, Megan, is um, it's very nice. So thank you for for asking, Florence. Thank you, Jeanette and Megan. I invite you to share whatever is in your heart at this point in time. Yeah, I. Um... Well, y'all should have told me to like have my tissues nearby because I uh, wasn't prepared for that. <laughs> I just had to use my sleeves to wipe my tears away. <laughs> I started singing along too. Like it was such a catchy um, like chorus. Like I just, it was so beautiful. And I think I've been really grateful recently um, just with like, <laughs> This stuff, uh, I don't know, like losing icons, I guess. Um, and it really comforts me to know that there are so many, you know, especially like indigenous women vocalists and songwriters that are in this community that I live in that aren't really famous, um, whose work is still really beautiful. And I think that, <laughs> I'm trying to say something without saying it, but <laughs> without naming names, I'm really grateful in this time to like be able to realize that those people that are actually in our communities and our networks are the ones that we can lean on and and um, work together with, and and that we have. Every time I like go to like an open mic or something, or like listen to other Indigenous artists, I'm like, oh my God, we're all so talented. <laughs> It's, a, it's so beautiful. <laughs> it's so beautiful. I'm going to invite Kyle because Kyle had some questions that he's so curious about. So Kyle, I'm going to invite you to ask your wonders of Jeanette and Megan. Thank you. Thank you so much, Florence. And uh, I so appreciate getting to meet you both in the same digital space after um, relaying by email, by phone, by um, even just mutual uh, support along the way. I know that you've both been very patient in the process because we began this, what, maybe nine nine months ago um, or, or so doing uh, thinking of promotion and and even even 
years before that thinking about okay how are we going to put forward music for this and uh and so this is an idea and a process and an episode years in the making where we'd been considering um uh ensuring that that indigenous music um is is both the beginning the middle the end of of the episode the the the, the beads uh woven in between and so um really appreciating getting the chance to to share space with you both here and um yeah and and i i had a, i had a few questions actually get having gotten to know you both um throughout this this, this process um can you walk me through um uh both of you can you can you walk me through what it has been like for you to steward your piece along the way right from from getting to know your your song letting it come to you um where are the inspirations for that how you have um even brought in um r relations along the way or or incorporated uh editing what has it been like for you to to steward your pieces um and uh and yeah Jeanette maybe we'll hear from you first and then Megan will hear from you um, well, my story is long, so and I'm kind of long-winded. <laughs> but um, but what I want to say first uh, about the song is that um, one ska in Cree, for people who don't know Cree very well, is um, is to wake up, and um, and it was a word that I remember my cookum uh, Agath Sinclair. She was a Kutre, but she never spoke English. She spoke very little English. So when she babysat us, everything was in Cree. And so you'd hear that word, one ska, like it's like, get up, get out of bed, <laughs> get on with it. <laughs> um, but it was, uh, it was not, it was meant in a good way, right, to wake up. And I think, um, so I can't remember exactly how this song came to me. But one thing that is sticking out in my mind, and part of it is because how we started today's session with Florence on the phone, dealing with her, with her dad, right? and the care of the elders and our loved ones and our family. Um, when there was a time in, um, I think it's 2021, my mom had had a, a series of strokes. And one of the times that she'd had a serious stroke, our family took turns staying at her house to care for her. She was still able to walk, but it, she was getting more fragile. And when the news hit of the bodies that were being discovered, the babies that were being discovered, um, and, you know, the, the first one was the one in, in BC, right, in Kamloops. And it was so overwhelming, even though as Indigenous people, we'd heard stories. It, it's like the shock of it still and the numbers. Uh, I w it was just, uh, you know, I didn't even have the words uh, to express the grief and shock of it. And I'll try not to cry, but <laughs> it's kind of who I am. I'm, I was trying to express my feelings about it. And we were caring for my mom. It was just my mom and I home and she was in the other room and I was caring for her. So I couldn't allow myself to feel my feelings because I was the caregiver. So I had to take that grief and just shelve it. And I couldn't write a song without crying. And so I just let it be. And Cree, you know, we'd say Kiam, let it go for now. So I just let it go and um, took care of my mom for like a long period of time. Or a few of us in our family cared for her. So um, so letting this song come out, it, it's like it comes out in pieces. And that's kind of how it evolved was just writing about the things that were significant for our people. So I felt like I wrote this song for our people. In many ways, I wrote it for myself, telling myself, wake up, you know. But it's also for all people, wake up, listen to our realities, right? We know they're there. But more than anything, this song was about honoring our people, honoring Indigenous people. And, and so I wrote it from that place. We need to honor each other. And we need to honor ourselves. And more importantly, those ones that came before us. So the song kind of is like a, a guiding post or something for me. For when I get insecure and I don't want to stand in the light, 
you know, like Kyle, when you're talking about used to being in the background, I'm used to being in the background in my family. I, you know, one of six kids kind of in the middle, um, always, you know, quiet kid, right? So it's very hard to step into your own light. And so um, I'm most comfortable in groups and I'm most comfortable in the background. And so um, this song is a real push for me to, to acknowledge gifts when they come and to honor that gift. And so um, that's kind of how it came. And I also, um, excuse me, wanted to, to honor the, the importance of, of the four among our people, you know, the sacredness of four in the circle, the circle of life, all of it, the medicine wheel, uh, directions, of Nihiao people, Cree people. Um, and so I needed to do the four verses. And even though the song is long, I never wrote it to be aired. I wrote it to honor. And so um, it just felt like uh, it was all about honoring all of the way. And, and I had to stay with it. And uh, and to invite people. When, when I've performed, we as a band, Prairie Sky, have performed the song, um, we always invite people in the audience to sing with us. I always tell them, but it's often non-Indigenous people <laughs> listening. And I get quite a charge out of hearing like white people singing, one sky, we go rise. <laughs> and I love it, actually. It's quite touching because um, I think people love to sing. And for us to sing collectively is healing. So um, so I, it, I've come to that place where I do enjoy um, you know, singing it and hearing people sing with me. And so um, that's a long-winded response, Kyle, but that's kind of how the song came came to. Oh, Jeanette, thank you. Um, I, I so appreciate that. And then, you know, listening to the lyrics of your song, you really hear that, um, where that's driven from and where that's, where that finds a, a kind of auditory embodiment so yeah what a wonderful contribution Jeanette we're we're honored to share this in in this um in this production let's see Thank um you. yeah Megan do you mind telling do you mind telling me a bit about um what it's been like for you to steward your piece to to build relationships along the way even um who you've invited uh to to join in this contribution or or how you've come to inspiration i mean so many questions but what what has it been like for you to to steward this piece i i just want to say first that like i'm so honored for my piece to be alongside Jeanette's I, and especially hearing your explanation behind behind your piece like i feel I don't know, in a similar way, like I put a lot of my own medicine into my song and yeah, I'm just, I mean, I, yeah, I kind of wrote it cause I, I needed it. I needed that strength to get through. And sometimes I was worried I didn't have that. And yeah, I'm just so like inspired and grateful when there's other people who are who are committed to that kind of, I think it's really about like, like finding ourselves and helping our, our community to all work together and respect who each of us are. Um, yeah, and so this song for me, it's actually the first and only song I've ever written. Um, <laughs> I've always been a singer um, and recently like, since 2020, I have become a poet. Uh, so people kept on asking me like, well, why don't you write songs? You're a singer and you're a poet, just write songs. <laughs> I was always like, well, it's not that easy. I don't know. I always would try and then wouldn't, it wouldn't come or yeah, I didn't know how to do it. Um, and then one time I was at a poetry open mic and this guy, um, Dan Poitra, uh, he's like, an indigenous guy in the poetry community in Edmonton. He came up to me after this open mic because I had sang a Leonard Cohen song and I had also read one of my own poems. And he came up and he said like, you should write songs. And I, 
kind of already went through that. And then, so that's what I told him. And he was like, well, you know, Leonard Cohen used to just like write poetry. And then he started doing songs by just putting his poetry to music. So I went home that night um, and I had just recently reread one of my elders, Willie Ehrman. He wrote this um, article called Aboriginal Epistemology, which I've always found just so inspiring. And it just really te- like talks to me about how deep, deeply like liberatory Cree philosophies are. And so I was reading that article again and I had read it before in my life, but I was coming to it again after a quite tumultuous period in my life where I um, I had started going to ceremony, I think maybe like in 2017 after my Muslim pun passed away. And part of that connection and, and the, the healing of of Cree philosophy for me was reconnecting me to myself. And through that process, I realized that I was gay, which I didn't know before, or I did, but I had repressed it so much. And so, um, yeah, when I, when I reread Willie Ehrman's article, I was just thinking about how, how lost I was and how trapped I was and how like the love of the elders was really like teaching me how to be myself and to come home to myself. Um, so I wrote a poem about that. And then, and then I put it to music and that's what this song is. And it, yeah, I like, Well, I kind of heard it too much when I was recording it, so now I'm kind of sick of it. (laughs) But um, yeah, it's really reflective of how that process, you know, like that was a really, really long process of I only came out when I was 28 years old. Um, And I like (laughs) broke up with I was with a, a man for 11 years of my life, and I would never have been able to break up with him and get the strength to to be able to live actually without without that medicine of the indigenous artists around me and the elders teachings and constant encouragement um there is a funny story about that's very very um fitting for the the theme of the song is that when i was recording this song the sound technician thought that the one lyric I have, it's called a prison can look like a guide. Um, And he thought I was singing a prison can look like a guy. And I was like, "Mm, yep, my ex. (laughs) So yeah, that's what I'll say for now. Wow. As as empowering as that liberation can be, I'm, I'm so appreciative of your, <laughs> in true academic form, bringing in <laughs> references and, and and indigenous epistemologies into the creation and fruition of your music and and uh, and just the totality of what that means. So wow, I'm very grateful for what you've just shared, Megan. Um, I'd like to invite uh, Dr. Cindy Gaudet. Um, to to share um even just your own your own insights your reflections merci kyle um and jeanette and megan listening to both of your pieces with you here has brought a whole deepened meaning for me and i had listened to them separately and then hearing your reflections of your process and i just so appreciate uh the stories behind what we create and how we are part of creation and creating and creators and and so hearing um both of you share um yeah me too kleenexes oh my god i'm weepy on the other side here of the screen (laughs) and and then thinking and jeanette you know and it's like linking about our mothers and thinking about your mother and it's my mother's birthday today and then Florence about your father. So just these pieces around our families and our experiences of our lives and how different, how it touches, how I'm, it touches different parts of me as well. And also thinking about 
um, that the footage that will be accompanying your songs is we will rise, you know, so I was thinking about, and I've heard Wanuska, you know, when I was in community, the song about this waking up of, of, of us waking up, Indigenous people waking up, doing my doctoral work when I was up in Omishkwekwak territory, Jeanette, it's like, they would sing that song, Wanuska, you know, and when I heard you sing it, we will rise, and and then thinking about the footage of when we gathered in April and we, we had a pop gathering. And so the footage with your songs will be our community, our indigenous community here at the U of A and the strength of that community that we have, you know, that you, that you speak about also, Megan, and how the songs and then seeing us visiting and being together, um, and and the the piece, you know, uh, for me, Megan, when you speak about that, I'm not alone. And then I see the community, right? And we'll actually have that footage through your songs that'll be reflected. Like we couldn't have even made this up if we wanted to. Like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so I want to acknowledge Kyle and this team, right? Because this is how, you know, when we're not working alone, the magic and the beauty that can happen. And so Kyle had this inspiration years when we first began to wanting to have Indigenous artists uh, be the voices and the song and that and that sound, the consciousness also of, of who we are and what we represent. And, and then making it happen with, you know, the floor, support of Florence and, and um, with this work so it's it's like a, a two and a half years making in the process and then having the community broadly community expressed and so i could see we are rising we will rise and i'm not alone and how they're they're both so tied together so and then the piece of honor so just sitting with that it's been said so many times and um honoring our people you know, um, Jeanette, and yeah, it's a beautiful, I'm feeling very honored to be sitting here um, and part of this conversation and uh, quite touched, actually. So, merci, both of you. Friends, you've heard the beauty of the stories that both Megan and Jeanette have shared about their writing of this be the beautiful music you've heard. We're going to continue with the interview and the conversation with Megan, Jeanette, Cindy, Kyle, and I for a second episode. And we invite you to wait till the next full moon to hear the continuing stories of these two amazing Indigenous artists. <laughs>